This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you're at all familiar with the forces of chaos within the Warhammer 40K universe, then you're most likely familiar with a creature known as a demon prince. But have you ever heard of a demon king? As that's apparently a thing, but admittedly, there's really not a lot of information on them. Today, we're gonna look at one such entity, a demon that was said to be so powerful that he came incredibly close to overthrowing one of the chaos gods. But before we get into him, I wanna take a few minutes to talk about the demonic hierarchy within the realm of chaos. The four chaos gods, Nurgle, Lord of Plagues, Khorne, the Blood God, Slanesh, the Prince of Pleasure, and Zinch, the Architect of Fate, stand at the top, each ruling over a portion of the warp that they have carved out for themselves. Now beneath them are their lords and generals, greater demons, hateful entities gifted enormous power by their patron gods, each a sick and twisted reflection of the spiteful entity they are bound to. Now these creatures are often given a certain level of independence, and time and time again, we have seen them act against their lord's will. Now, it is to be noted that this is a rather rare occurrence, but it demonstrates that they are not just mindless drones, like the vast hordes of lesser demons controlled by the gods. And beneath the greater demons are the demon princes, normally mortals that have ascended to demonhood by the will of the chaos gods, or such as with Belakor, the very first demon prince, created in tandem by all of the gods contributing a portion of their enormous power to create an unholy, blasphemous entity of intense destructive capabilities, who would then be withholden to all of them equally. Now, for the mortal followers of Chaos, achieving demonhood and becoming a demon prince is the ultimate goal. And actually making it all the way to becoming a demon prince is incredibly rare. It's achieved only by a select few individuals. And most that would follow the eight-pointed path are more likely to be turned into a gibbering, slabbering Chaos spawn, even if they've done everything in their pursuits absolutely correctly. The gods can be fickle like that. It is said that the sacrifices these individuals would lay at their gods' feet are on planetary scales, butchering their way across the stars and offering figurative and sometimes literal oceans of blood and mountains of skulls to their dark masters. In exchange for their service, the demon prince would be granted a whole bunch of blessings, including an enormous boost in power, their own demon planet and an army of demons to command, and most importantly of all, immortality. Now, just like all demons, if a demon prince was ever to be killed in the physical universe, they would be reborn in the realm of chaos. Now, sometimes this immortality and serving their god for all time is exactly what a chaos worshiper would want. And other times it ends up being a hellish existence that there's no escaping from. But if I'm being honest, it's normally a little of column A, a little of column B. Regardless, there is no doubt that demon princes are incredibly powerful champions of the gods. Now, way down at the bottom of the hierarchy, you have the numerous and varied entities known as lesser demons. These take thousands of different forms, from the bloodletters of corn to the tiny and voracious nerglings, and not to mention the various menagerie of hellish warp spawn in between. These form the bulk of the armies of the chaos gods, the foot soldiers, set with a task of waging unending war upon their lord's siblings and the denizens of the physical universe. The hierarchy seems simple enough, but when you start to dive into the deeper lore, it starts to become a lot more malleable. Since before time, there have been entities that have swelled to power levels so inconceivable that they have sought to challenge the gods themselves. There are entities that are far more powerful than a greater demon, but aren't quite on the same scale as a chaos god. A name that I've seen kicked around for them a couple of times is that of a primordial demon. One such entity is known as the Prisoner of the Emerald Cave, a horrifying demon of Nurgle that is locked away deep in a mountain and under constant surveillance and guard by the Grey Knights. And when it comes to primordial demons like this, there really isn't much information on them, often only serving as a plot device for a single novel. So we don't know the full scale of what they exactly are, but with the Prisoner in particular, we can see that it's basically a massive Great Unclean One, just vastly more powerful and with the ability to spawn its own demons. However, we'll do a more in-depth video on him at some point in the future, because this video is all about something far more terrifying. In my reading, I've come across one entity that has a different title altogether, a Demon King, an entity known as Isairiel. But before we dive into that, here's a quick shout out to this week's sponsor. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that makes designing your own website easy and fun. Whether you're looking to move your business online, start your very own blog, or just need a nifty portfolio to display all of your creative works. Whatever it is that you're trying to do with your website, Squarespace makes it easy. It's as simple as choosing one of their hundreds of award-winning templates. And then after that, everything is pretty much drag and drop. You don't need to know anything about coding or any of that really complicated stuff. As website design for a first-timer can 
be pretty intense. And Squarespace has a suite of easy to use mobile apps that allow you to maintain and update your website from anywhere in the world, even if you don't have access to your computer. They even have this really cool video production app that allows you to make engaging content for your website. Even if you don't know the first thing about fancy cameras or microphones, you can make some pretty cool stuff with just your smartphone. And if owning your very own website sounds appealing to you, then you can go to squarespace.com slash Westhammer and use the code Westhammer to get 10% off your first website or domain. Thanks again to the awesome people over at Squarespace for sponsoring this video and let's get into the grimdark. In my 15 years of reading 40k lore, Isai Real is the only entity I've ever encountered with the moniker of Demon King. And needless to say, information on this creature is incredibly scarce. The bulk of which coming from the final book in the Eisenhorn trilogy, Hereticus. And don't worry, I'm gonna tread carefully here as to do my absolute best not to spoil any major plot lines from the series, as the Eisenhorn trilogy by Dan Abinett is, as far as I'm concerned, quintessential reading for 40k fans. It's some of his best work and I'd be doing a massive disservice by spoiling it. But there will be a few mentions of a particular book and a place of importance to the Demon King. Now in the story, Eisenhorn, an Inquisitor and his team, are trying to track down the fabled nation of Ghoul. They study a book known as the Malleus Codicium, a demonic grimoire of dark and terrible secrets. And detailed within the pages of the grimoire are detailed depictions of powerful sorcerer's rituals and a cataloged history of the warp and its denizens. The book itself is said to be thousands of years old, and by what means a person was able to learn the secrets that they jotted down within its pages is a complete mystery. In the wrong hands, the knowledge in this tome could be used to devastate entire worlds. But most peculiar of all is the depiction of Isairiel, the Demon King. Supposedly this Demon King was an incredibly powerful demon of Zinch, so much so that the normal title of Greater Demon or Demon Prince doesn't really do him justice. Now whether through giving into his own hubris or having become disillusioned with his master's teachings, the Demon King turned against Zinch. He had swelled in power to such ludicrous proportions that he actually had the ability to usurp him. And Isairiel's influence must have been of a pretty insane magnitude as he managed to turn countless demons into his service and take up arms against the Lord of Secrets. Now, when it comes to his followers, whether or not he was able to make his own demons in his own image, had demons of the other four chaos gods believe in his cause and choose to follow him of their own free will, or he had the ability to dominate demons that were beneath him. They're just described here as his followers, and it's most likely a combination of all three things. His army's numbers and strength were enough to at the very least match that of a literal chaos god. Isairiel's ultimate goal was to cast down Zeech and take his place as the new god of magic and treachery. It is said that the two entities and their armies warred against each other for a billion years, neither side gaining ground over the other. When the Demon King fought, he would take to the battlefield riding atop his chariot, a massive war machine said to be the size of an imperial hive city, a weapon of apocalyptic destructive potential. Isairiel and his army carved a bloody path across the realm of chaos, fighting countless battles against Zinch and his forces. Now, timelines get a little bit muddy here, but it's stated that this war took place when there were only three chaos gods. So this was before Slaanesh existed. And I know the lore also says that from the gods' perspective, Slaanesh had always existed and never existed at the same time, despite the fact that we here in the physical universe have a literal date when they were created. Time in the warp gets pretty weird, but from the history listed in the Malleus Codicium, Slaanesh didn't exist. So we have to do our best to kind of place an order to these events. So this would indicate to me that this billion year war took place before the shattering of Zinch's crystal staff, is said to be one of the most powerful relics in any universe. You see, at one point, Zinch had gotten far more powerful than any of the other gods. This resulted in Korn, Nurgle, and Slaanesh joining forces to overthrow their brother. He feared that their combined power, at the very least, could interfere with his plans, regardless of whether they'd be able to kill him or not. So in a battle against all three, Zinch made a real big show of his staff being shattered into millions of pieces, each of which, flew across space and time, each representing a different spell and thus introducing magic to the physical universe. So if the Demon King's revolt happened before the shattering, then that would mean he was fighting a fully empowered Zinch. Which just imagine how powerful Zinch is in the story right now. That's him after he's lost the vast majority of his power. And for any demon to even be able to come close to matching one of the gods for even a minute, let alone a billion years, is an unbelievable feat. For example, Scarbrand, a bloodthirster of corn, and one of the most powerful playable demon characters in the 40k tabletop game, also attempted to usurp his patron god, Korn. This took the form of him swinging at him when Korn had his back turned, 
he threw all of his might into a single axe swing, a blow that was said to be so powerful that it could level entire planets. And all it managed to do was chink Korn's armor. Korn, enraged less by the act of betrayal and more so by the absolute cowardice of the attack, got so angry he grabbed Scarbrand by the throat. He shook his personality out of him and threw him across space and time for eight days straight, like a burning comet that left an inconceivable trail of destruction in its wake. Now Scarbrand survived, but he was left as a shell of his former self, all of his ambition having been stripped away until there was nothing left but endless rage. Now the fact that he survived is pretty impressive, but the battle was over in moments, before it even really began. He didn't fight against Korn for a billion years. Now that being said, the Demon King's revolt was ultimately unsuccessful, and in a great and terrible climactic battle, he was killed by Zinch. His followers fled the warp in terror and sought refuge in the physical universe. There they established the capital of Gull and six fledgling colonies. And the world they would end up settling on was actually a planet-sized mausoleum made to house the body of their lord and his great chariot. What ended up happening to the demons that followed him is a complete mystery, but the fact that they were able to exist in the physical universe at all, let alone long enough to build a thriving empire, is also pretty impressive, as normally demons can't exist outside of the Immaterium without an incredibly powerful sorcerer summoning them, or some form of extreme act of blasphemy being sustained for a long period of time. This demonic world floated there in space, untouched by mortal hands, holding within its depths one of the most powerful relics the physical universe would ever see. But unfortunately, this is where our knowledge of the Demon King ends. It's a creature shrouded in mystery. Now, the material universe in 40K is one that has enormous gaps in it. Countless records have been lost or purged during its timeline. So its long history of events can be difficult and downright frustrating to piece together. Uh, but the history of the warp is on an entirely different level. We're only given small glimpses here and there, and its history is written with enigmas instead of syllables and metaphors instead of facts. And those that seek to divine its secrets are often driven mad by the attempt. A single syllable of the demonic tongue being spoken aloud it contains enough power to shatter minds and topple empires. Needless to say, the truth of Isidiel will likely always remain a mystery to us, but this illustrates that there are creatures out there strong enough to challenge the gods themselves. And if one such individual rose to power before, it could certainly happen again in the future. And whether or not this demon would seek to usurp one of the Chaos Gods, or become an entirely new one altogether, the cascading series of events that would follow this would have apocalyptic consequences for the entirety of our universe. If you enjoyed this video, it would mean the world to me if you dropped a like on it. It helps out my channel a lot and helps to push this video even further. And go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell if you want to see more content like this. I also have a Patreon listed down in the description of this video. It's because of the support people have shown me over there that me and my friends were able to invest in an entire podcast setup, not to mention some rental space to record in. So we're going to have a public podcast coming soon. We've already got a few episodes up on the Patreon, so if a bunch of nerds getting drunk rambling about 40k is something that you're interested in, consider checking us out over there. And thanks again for watching my video all the way through. It seriously means the world to me. And that's it. I'll catch y'all on the next one.